Hi, everyone. I pray that you're doing well. I'm going to try and make this as short and sweet as possible. I'm calling this video Finishing Strong because these are things that I often try to tell students throughout a process of writing. And it's easy to lose sight of these things as you're trying to get to the finish line. So we're going to finish strong by focusing on five specific things that you need to do. Number one, reread the assignment sheet that you've been given. You should know all of the expectations, and this goes for the rubric as well. Sometimes people like a rubric where it's broken down into exactly how things are laid out, and how you're going to be graded or scored or evaluated. Uh, other people need more of a narr narrative document and so you've got both in this course. Reread and use that document to make sure you've done everything you should do. Number two, please go back and take a look at your introduction. Your introduction must be laid out so that the reader knows what's coming. This means that first of all you need to have some sort of general introduction for your topic. And it builds up, it's almost a page long, and it builds up to your thesis, which should be an SOS statement. It should be specific, it should be an opinion, and it should be significant. And remember that this is a contrast paper, so you need to have both sides of this contrast in that one thesis statement sentence. That is the second to last sentence. The last sentence of your introduction should be your forecasting statement and that should read like an outline or a list. It should have a series of items. These are topics that you are going to cover and that's whether you're doing plan A or plan B of your paper. Uh, you still need to have the topics that are being introduced that you're going to cover and that should set up the reader to understand the organization of your whole paper. Okay, so number two is really your introduction. Number three, I want to redirect you to Clue and think about what Clue has meant. Clue is that string that leads a reader into the maze of your writing and leads the reader back out again. Some people call it a through line. You need to have a clear line, a string that you can follow back to that thesis statement that you have in your introduction. How do you do this? The number one thing is transition words. Sometimes we say transitional expressions. I often see with students that they have not put clear transition words, maybe because it seems too elementary and you might assume that the reader knows where you're going or where you've been. Words like first of all, secondly, thirdly, Obviously, you don't want to go on ad infinitum and be ridiculous about it, but those are actually very helpful things. They are clear words or expressions that help a reader know, okay, this is the first thing in this category and the second thing in this category, and then the reader will know when you've changed to a new category. This is so important. Without it, a reader can get lost. And it's not because you're not a good writer, it's because those simple things, that's, these are, this is a convention of clear writing. Those simple things need to be there, okay? So that's number three. Number four, you need to realize that going the distance means getting a full length paper. And that's why, again, you read the rubric, you read the assignment sheet. And I know sometimes you just get stuck and you're ready to be done. But I think that you can make this happen if you stretch out the parts that can be stretched. You should be able to stretch your introduction. Add a story. If you tell a story, there's no way that you're not going to have enough to, to fill a page for your introduction. And a conclusion can be done in the same way. You're personalizing things a little bit more in the introduction and conclusion. And so really, you have one page introduction six pages of body and one page of conclusion and you've got your eight full pages and I really am strict about this because I believe you can do it okay 
Don't forget then, number five, is you need to know your works cited page goes at the top of a clean new page. You don't jam it in with other text. The, the works cited or reference page should be formatted correctly and I've given you models to do that. So if you do these five things, you'll be in really good shape. I want to also remind you, because this is a literary analysis, we're using a very simple convention. You need to write your verbs in the present tense. It's like you're taking your readers on a guided tour, and the story is reenacted in real time. So instead of saying, Gatsby went to Oxford, you would say Gatsby has gone to Oxford or Gatsby goes with Daisy, not Gatsby went with Daisy. Now you don't change direct quotations. Obviously you don't go back and change the wording of the quotations. That's not expected. Uh, but every time you're explaining things, imagine it's happening right now. I hope that these things can help you feel that you can be successful. Uh, I think you've done great work so far. And this is just about finishing strong and feeling like you've done everything you can do. God bless you as you finish strong.